thought I'd give you a really quick rundown on grain storage. Again, you've spent so much effort harvesting and growing the crop, it'd be such a shame to then um, lose out on storage when you could possibly gain some from it. So give me an idea, who's storing grain on farm? All of you, great. Um, what's the main reason you're storing grain on farm? Throw them out there, why are you storing grain on farm? Uh, just just to, for later you know, sales and things like that, and uh, yeah, but basically that I guess. Yep. Keep the header rolling. Harvest logistics, keep the header rolling, yep. Good. Why else are we storing grain on farm? Grain marketing. Marketing, perfect, awesome. Rightio. Um, there's a few things you can do to help out. Um, reducing issues with grain storage, so um, preventing insects, preventing mould, um, and then of course phosphine if we do have insects. So um, I've got a couple of snacks here to help us get through to lunch if you guys uh, bear with me and, uh, and throw the answers at me really quickly. So what, what can you guys do to prevent insect issues in your grain storage? What are the, what are the things you do to prevent insects? Clean it. clean it, perfect. You said clean it. Yep, what else do we do? Fumigate, yep. Who said someone over here was quick? Fumigate, so fumigate I'd say is a um, something we do if we get insects, but it doesn't really prevent them. If they're there, they'll get killed, but we can't fumigate to prevent them. So what else can we do to prevent insects? We can clean it. I'm sure you uh, <coughs> harvest when your grain's dry, don't harvest when your grain. Harvest when your grain's dry, yep, don't harvest damp grain. Uh, if we do have to harvest some damp grain, which does happen from time to time, we can utilise aeration cooling for that. So yes, you can set up for aeration drying. Most people don't go to that extent, but even aeration cooling, you can hold damp grain until you can either blend it or dry it or feed it out. So aeration cooling can be used to hold damp grain um, until you can deal with it. So what else we can do? We can clean, clean the silage, we harvest at the right temperature, um, aeration cooling, right moisture. What else can we do? to prevent insects in our grain storage. Sealable silo. You're going to get a bucket full of these at this rate. So why do we have a sealable silo? There's a trick question because it's a wrong answer. I'll give you a heads up on that one. So that, so that when you do fumigate it, you can get a you know, full coverage of everything. Perfect question. No, no. I was going to give you the whole lot. Great, great answer. So if we do want to fumigate, we've got to have a sealable silo. We've got to keep the gas in the silo long enough to kill all the insects at all their life stages. Um, I'll do a demonstration of that um, a bit later on, but there's still some more things in it, and it doesn't surprise me that they get overlooked of what we can actually do to prevent insects, pre prevent having to use phosphine, to prevent having a, a, a problem. Um, dryer side is one of them, pretty easy stuff to use. So uh, it's non-chemical. Um, a powder product, you can put it in with a little blowback gun or with a leaf blower. Um, in, to give you an idea, like a, a 100 tonne silo, I think it's about 400 grams. So you don't need much at all. Uh, so after you've done your clean, just after you've done your clean, so do a whole farm clean up before the grain's in there. I, I do it at least 10 days before you fill it. Give this product a, a bit of time to work. So the ideal time of year to do your clean up is in winter. When it's cold, insects don't, don't breed as quick, don't move around, so do a big clean up. Where else might you want to do a clean up in a dry side? Header. Header, yep. Where else? Where else might you want to clean? August. August. Right. You got to get one anyway. What else handles grain? Taste of in, mother of in. What else might you want to keep clean? Absolutely. Anything that handles grain, chase of bins, mother bins, trucks, grain cleaners, sheep feeders um, are a hard one, of course, too. So, uh, and the common mistake I see is people clean up, particularly when they know I'm coming because I'm a grain storage guy apparently, um, and they do a clean up, put the grain in a bucket or a bag and go and sit it in the corner of the shed. And that little bucket or bag becomes a breeding ground. So um, absolutely, um, under, 
can't, can't overestimate cleaning up. So do a good clean up, do a structural treatment. Monitoring um, for insects I think is part of prevention. Has anyone seen these probe traps? They go in the top of the silo, tie them off so you don't forget they're in there and they end up in the auger. But put them in the top of the silo, in the grain. If there's any insects in there, they'll crawl through and they'll end up in the, in the trap down there. So really quick and easy way when you do check your storage, pull them out, have a look what's in there. You can buy them from Bugs for Bugs or Grain Tech Scientific. I think they're about 30 bucks. And I reckon GRDC might have a... I ran out yesterday. Ran out yesterday. They did have a, a couple, so you have to keep going to GRDC um, events to, to get some freebies. But um, I don't mind coupling it with a little temperature sensor to tell you what's going on with temperature as well. How long if, do you have to leave them in for, Chris? I'd check them every couple of weeks, straight after harvest. Until your grain starts cooling down, either with aeration cooling or um, you know, until you get into winter and the insect pressure is lower, I'd be checking them every two weeks at least once a month. If you go along and you find a couple of insects and the grain temperature is still over 30 degrees, you need to do something. They'll reproduce pretty quickly. If I've got aeration cooling in that silo and I check it, I find a couple of insects, but I'm only at 20 degrees or even 15 degrees, no panic. Won't be much in there. Yep. What else can we do to prevent insects in grain storage? <coughs> Prevention, there's one more really key one. Spray on products, protectants. Did anyone use the old phenytrothine, IGR, those old products? Yep. Anyone use KOBIL or Conserve Plus? Your products? No. So they're a product, just be aware, with the spray on products now, None of them are designed to kill insects. So it's no good waiting till you've got insects. Go down to the shop and ask for a spray on product to kill them. They're not designed to do it. They're, they're more like an aeroguard, not a fly spray, in that they're designed to prevent and deter insects. They're not designed to kill them. So um, don't go down to your local shop asking for a spray on product to kill insects. So that's the main prevention things. Um, we spoke about phosphine either in a tablet form or a bag chain. Does anyone use the bag chains? Form of phosphine? No, the same thing, the phosphine just stitched into the bag. Who uses phosphine in a tablet form? A few of you, yep. <coughs> Where do we put it? We used to put phosphine in with the grain and that's how we do it. It's off label now. Uh, and the reason for that, um, it, it's actually quite dangerous. If the phosphine doesn't liberate, in the grain, whoever then takes the grain and digests it, and it happened in WA a few years ago. Uh, a guy did that, put phosphate in with the grain, sold that grain to some racehorses, and killed the racehorses. So really dangerous, we don't put it in with the grain. We need to put it in the headspace, either in trays in the headspace of a silo, um, or in a ground level application system. Or hang these in the headspace. Yep. Make sense? Straightforward. Sorry, label dosage rate is tablet per ton? Roughly two tablets per ton of grain storage capacity. So it doesn't matter how full the silo is, the grain storage capacity of that silo. Yep. Um, when you're handling phosphine, a mask with a category B filter. Your little um, your, your normal uh, insecticide filters that you use for your broadacre chemicals out your tractor, not going to take phosphine out. Need a category B filter. It is pretty dangerous stuff. Um, does anyone know what, uh, excuse me, what um, parts per million you can smell phosphine at? It's pretty low. Have a guess. Less than five parts per million. I'll give you a, a hint. Less than five ppm. When can you smell it? Have a guess. Two. You've been before. <laughs> two parts per million. You can smell phosphine at two parts per million. Have a guess at what level it starts doing your damage. Point 0.5. Point 0.5, close. Is there another one over here? Two, two. close. It's in between those two. One, <laughs> one part per million. 
So by the time you can smell phosphine at two parts per million, it's already doing your damage. And affects your nervous system, so pretty dangerous stuff. You don't want to muck around with it, yeah? Um, we talked about sealable silos. Has anyone done a pressure test? Guessing probably, yeah? Oh, perfect. Come up and give me a hand. Not that system, mate. Come up and give me a hand anyway. Hold this for me. Did you pressurise the silos with something like this? or? Oh, we had the nipple on the end and the air Yeah, closer. right. Out. Yep. Just pumping up enough to push your oil up. Yeah. Yep, perfect. So I'll get you to hold those two. So that's just a fitting to get the air into the silo. We use a leaf blower to make it quick and easy. The pressure relief valve will be on the side of the silo somewhere. Um, could be a YouTube version of this. So we pressurise the silo until we get the oil level an inch apart. So it'll bubble away. Let the oil level settle down to an inch apart. Then we'd start, we'll start our stopwatch until the oil level falls halfway back to half an inch apart. So it's a half-life pressure test. Yep. How long should that take on a brand new silo to tell you that it's actually sealed? From an inch apart to half an inch apart on a brand new silo. Don't answer because these guys should know it. Five minutes. Absolutely. Yep. So five minutes and there's an Australian standard for that, 26, 28. So if you're looking at buying new silos, insist that it meets the Australian standard, 26, 28, and that is it'll pass the pressure test. For your existing silos out there, before you use phosphine, to make sure they're actually going to hold the phosphine in them long enough, what, what's your half-life pressure test you need? It's less than five minutes, three minutes. We know three minutes will do the job. Thanks for your help. Need someone to hold the props for me. Sorry, forgive my ignorance, Chris, but how do you do that if, you're, if the silo doesn't seal? So if the silo doesn't seal, you won't get, either you won't get enough pressure to get the oil level to move apart, or they'll fall back quicker than three minutes. So you'll be able to pressurise it, but they'll just fall straight back again. Right, and so if you do that, you've got to shift the grain to somewhere you can achieve that. Correct. True. Or fix the, fix the leak in the solar. Often it might, if they're designed sealable and, they, and it could be sealed, maybe the leak's been damaged or bent or you forgot to put a hatch on or a, a, um, an inlet on a fan hasn't been sealed up or something like that. So seal it up, then, then do your pressure test. Yep. How long do we leave the phosphine in for? We've done our pressure test, we'll put the phosphine in the headspace, um, not with the grain. How long do we leave it in for? Have a guess? Someone have a guess? We're going to be here a long time if no one has a guess. How long? Five to seven days. Five to seven days, good guess. Seven to ten. You had one right? Seven to ten days, depending on the temperature of the grain. Leave the phosphate in there. What's the next step? We've got to vent the phosphine to make sure it's out before we deliver the grain. How long do we vent for? Anyone know? Have a guess. Same amount of time, pretty close. So if you have aeration cooling, the label says you can vent in one day. If you don't have any aeration, you've got to open the lid, take the phosphine out and vent for five days. What we're finding is uh, if you're delivering to Grain Corp or somewhere that tests for phosphine residue, you may need to vent for a little bit longer. If you've extended your fumigation time, you may need to vent for a little bit longer. You can buy one of those little safety meters They'll measure phosphine down as low as 0.3 parts per million. They'll tell you whether the grain is actually vented properly. You can couple them with a spear and actually spear your grain before you outload it and check that it is vented. I'm getting a number of calls from guys um, doing fumigations, doing good fumigations, uh, venting as per the label one or five days, not realising that if they've extended their fumigation period, um, they'll need to vent for longer as well. So they go and deliver their grain down to Grain Corp, cart it a long way and get rejected for uh, low level phosphine um, residue. 1500 bucks. they could buy one of these and test it before it leaves the farm, make sure it's clear. Um, conscious that it's been a long morning, so I'm going to wrap it up there. Um, I'll be over here. I don't sell any of this stuff, but it's um, just here to, to 
to help you guys can get it if you want to make grain storage a bit easier. There's some resources. The GRST Grain Storage Grow Notes. That's got everything we've spoken about today. Um, handy reference for grain storage and some contact details in the back. Um, does anyone know my phone number? Not you? Not you? Someone, surely. 1-800-WEEVIL. So if you have questions about grain storage, your levies that you pay to GRC pays me to answer that phone, 1-800-WEEVIL. Um, happy to help you out. It's thanks to GRC that um, we can do this work for you guys. If you want to do a workshop on grain storage and learn about it in more detail, learn about how you can maximise um, your storage without having issues, um, happy to come back and do that too as part of the GRC investment in grain storage extension. So come and grab these resources. There's also a condition guide on um, which silo manufacturers meet that Australian standard for the half-life pressure test. Um, another good resource or storedgrain.com.au is also another good resource for grain storage info.